This presentation seeks to clarify one of the most misunderstood macronutrients in the human diet. There are two types of protein, body protein and dietary protein. Body protein is protein that is part of every cell in our body, for example, muscles, organs, and hair. Over time, protein breaks down, thus more protein is needed by cells for growth and repair of broken down protein. This is where the next type of protein comes in. Dietary protein is protein we get from our diet. It functions to replace body protein, aiding growth and repair, and provides the body with energy. Though overall energy intakes decreased between 1990 and 2000, overall protein consumption shows an upward trend. This means that not only did protein intake re increase over the span of this 10 years, but the proportion of energy intake coming from protein has also increased. Recent consumer trends indicate similar results, an increase in protein intake. Over the past year in the United States, daily protein intake per capita has risen to 115 grams a day. Consumption of protein is projected to increase globally in the coming years. This will have a significant impact on health status as well as food manufacturers, putting greater pressure on livestock production. Current recommendations for protein consumption vary based on age group. Most adults require 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight of protein per day. However, individuals suffering from chronic diseases or illnesses may have increased requirements. Consumers can meet their protein requirements in a healthy way by eating a variety of foods, limiting saturated fats in protein, limiting red and processed meats, consuming moderate amounts of soy, and balancing carbohydrate and proteins to better meet the DRIs for this macronutrient. There are many fad diets out there that take advantage of this macronutrient. The goal of the Atkins diet is to induce weight loss by encouraging the body to burn fat rather than carbohydrates. According to Dr. Atkins, carbohydrates are overconsumed and cause unnecessary elevations in blood sugar. By consuming a higher protein diet rich in meat, fish, and poultry, better blood sugar control is attained. Weight loss and improvement of weight-related health issues has also been associated with shifts in carbohydrate burning to fat burning. Though there are obvious advantages to the Atkins diet, this diet tends to lack variety and balance needed to adequately meet nutritional needs and provide essential nutrients. Also, these high protein diets emphasize foods like meat, eggs, and cheese that are rich in saturated fats. Sustained consumption of these high fat foods increases risk of coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and several types of cancer. The Paleo diet proposes we discontinue consumption of highly processed carbohydrates and revert back to the eating style of hunter-gatherers, increased intake of protein and fat, and decreased intake of carbohydrate. The consumption of selective fruits and vegetables alongside lean meats is promoted on the Paleo diet. The combination of the vitamins and minerals from fruits and vegetables with the zinc and B vitamins present in lean meat gives the body added immunity to fight off colds and illnesses. Weight loss also tends to occur in individuals following the paleo diet because of the low glycemic index of accepted foods. However, this diet is not advisable for endurance athletes. Energy stores provided by carbohydrates become deleted, depleted on this diet, negatively impacting performance. Detrimental effects on the kidney of those consuming a high-protein diet have also been observed, as the kidneys experience more strain from increased workload needed to digest protein. Protein requirements are dependent on a variety of factors, including age, gender, and level of physical activity. In general, most Americans get enough protein. However, most need to make leaner and more varied selections of these foods. Portion control is very important when it comes to protein. Four to six ounces of protein per day is recommended. The serving size will depend on the type of protein being consumed. Two to three ounces of meat, poultry, or fish is considered one serving. This is approximately the size of a deck of cards. For other foods in the protein group, serving sizes are equated to one ounce serving of meat, one egg, one half cup of dried beans, one third cup of nuts, one half cup of tofu, and two tablespoons of peanut butter are equivalent to one ounce of meat. The one ounce is approximately the size of a ping pong ball. There are many common myths about protein and exercise. A lot of people believe that to build muscle mass, you need to eat more protein in addition to weight training. However, this is a misconception. To build muscle, you need to not only challenge your muscles beyond their normal levels of resistance, but you need to eat more calories than you burn. It has been recommended that endurance athletes consume 1.2 to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of weight each day. For resistance and strength trained athletes, 
The recommendation is a high as 1.6 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of weight each day. However, each person is different and may require more or less protein each day depending on their lifestyle, type of protein consumed, and the type of exercise they do. These recommendations can easily be met without supplementation through the diet alone. If one chooses to use supplementation, they should do so with caution. With supplementation comes excess protein consumption because you are already getting enough from your daily diet. There are some adverse effects. If you consume too much protein from supplements, often nutrients from foods are displaced. Excess protein does not offer any benefits as extra calories from protein are stored as fat. Also, carbohydrates, the body's main fuel source, is displaced when protein intake is increased. Before your workout, a small amount of protein can help your body use a broken down protein to optimize your body's ability to build and repair muscle at that moment. The amount you need for this is very minimal, about 6 grams, which is less than 1 ounce of meat. Some snacks include a very small portion of low fat meat such as white meat poultry, a hard boiled egg, peanut butter on toast, or a protein packed yogurt. After your workout, a small snack containing both carbohydrates and protein will help repair muscle proteins and replenish muscle glycogen stores after exercise. Some great post-workout snacks include cottage cheese with crackers, one tablespoon of peanut butter on whole wheat toast or with fruit, hard-boiled eggs one to two, yogurt, seafood, and white meat poultry. This concludes our protein presentation. We hope we've clarified any misconceptions in relation to protein intake. If you have any further questions, please consult the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website.